Hello and welcome to Community Conversations. I'm your host, KK Conishiro. With an earthquake and widespread power outages over the past few weeks, the Bay Area has received some clear signals on the importance of emergency preparation. And a group of Fremont Unified students is working to do just that. The Youth Emergency Preparedness Council is a student-run organization focusing on preparing Fremont's youth for the next natural disaster. The council is a way for students to develop and display their leadership skills outside of school while learning about emergency preparedness. We have members of the council with us to talk about their work, and we are so lucky to have you. Thank you so much for being here. So why don't you introduce yourself and tell me what grade you're in. Yeah, my name is Yusuf Rashid. I'm the president of Youth Emergency Preparedness Council, and I'm in 11th grade. 11th, okay. My name is Hirsch Karnani. I'm the Secretary of Youth Emergency Preparedness Council, and I'm in 10th grade. 10th, okay. Hi, my name is Sahil Singh, and I'm in 11th grade, and I'm the Vice President of the YEPC. So I got the big guns here. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so tell us, yes, we had an earthquake. Yes, we dealt with all those power outages, or so-called power outages. Some of them didn't happen, some of them did happen. Was this the catalyst that made you start this, or was there something else that made you say, you know what, guys, we need to do something here? What made you start this? Yeah, so this uh, council actually got formed in about June. So this wasn't hmm. due to- Before. Yeah, the power outages. Um, how this all started was that I've been the student representative at my high school for our safety committee. I go to mission. Um, and through there, I found out about a council through FEMA called Region 9 FEMA Youth Preparedness Council. Okay. Um, Region 9 encompasses California, Arizona, Nevada, and all the Pacific Islands. And I got onto that youth council in about June. Okay. As a part of that council, I wanted to do a similar project in Fremont because I noticed a lack of preparedness specifically for the youth. Yes. And so that's how we came up with the idea for YEPC, or Youth Emergency Preparedness Council, um, in Fremont, and now we've been executing events, which i will hoping to talk to you more about Okay, today. now educate me here. What's the safety council about? Yeah, so the safety committee, I uh, should have made that more clear. That's just a committee at MSJ specifically, okay. um, which has been there for a long time since the school has started. Um, but our council But what is, do they do? They do, we uh, focus on specific events for MSJ specifically. Got it. So we okay. do like CPR training. Um, we clean out our safety shed. We revise our fire drills. You have for the a schools. safety shed. Yeah, uh, Lucky actually, you. yeah. The safety shed at MSJ is actually one of the um, meetup spots in all of Fremont for officials to get supplies. So nice. we actually have a pretty important role in the city. Absolutely, because we're that's on the fault. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So when you got involved with this, did you call your friends and say, "I need help," or how did this work? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> I simple. turned okay. to Sahel and Hirsch actually as the first people that I wanted to go to because I wanted um, some of my other friends and students who I knew had great leadership skills to help expand this and we've already done a great job and I'm really happy to get them on the team. Good. Yeah, Were so, you excited to be asked? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? So the way me, Sahel, and Yusuf know each other is through Boy Scouts. And so that be has, prepared. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's true. That has definitely given us a lot of experience or some experience in emergency preparedness and first aid. And it also helped us develop our leadership skills, which Good. is also part of so the reason. So, were they also? Us. Were you all three of you in the same safety council? Is that no? No. Um, so just you were. Just I was, and okay. actually Hirsch is a, as in, he's a year younger than me. So I'm hoping to get him on next year to continue at MSJ once I graduate. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, we did have an earthquake. In the world of earthquakes, it was mild. Yeah. We get that, okay, but it did wake up a lot of people, okay. Um, what is the most important areas of preparation for an emergency, earthquake, or other that you would suggest people start doing now? Because we don't know where they're going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the most important thing people could do to prepare for an earthquake or say the power outages that happened is to make sure that everyone is on the right page, is on the same page as well. Yeah. Because everyone needs to be coordinated in order for actual action to happen because in situations like that chaos is the enemy basically chaos is basically the worst thing that could happen in right. that situation right especially in a family when you've got one child at this school in elementary one child at mission san jose and mom and dad are commuting in somewhere where does everybody meet i think that's a great idea exactly yeah um you guys I hope have an emergency kit, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, do you carry one with you, or do you have one at home and one at school, or how does that? How do you guys handle that? Yeah. So, um, at least for me personally, I have one at home, one for the family, one personally, and at school as well. As part of that safety okay. committee I mentioned, we've actually stored emergency kits in every single classroom. 
um, as that was last year's project. So uh, nice. we're definitely trying to get uh, at least MSJ specifically and hopefully the city more prepared. Okay. Now, from your experience and your expertise, tell our viewers what should be in that emergency kit. Yeah. Um, so the most important thing is definitely having food and supplies for at least three days. Um, we say 72 hours. Um, so that's going to be food, water. You're definitely going to want clothing. Um, yeah, uh, good pairs of shoes, because um, if we can imagine, let's say Fremont gets hit by a big earthquake, right, there's probably going to be a lot of rubble um, mm -hmm. that you're going to need to walk through. You might not be able to communicate properly, so having extra batteries, but I'd say Nor that, drive. Yeah. Yeah. But I definitely say the two most important things are food and water and clothing. Perfect. Do you guys agree? Yeah, absolutely. You guys ready? Yeah. You better be. <laughs> now, I know you guys go through a number of drills at school. Um, do you have plans to make this more s widespread throughout the district that everyone should get involved, just not Mission San Jose High? Yes. Yeah, because so, even if the if you guys are on the fault, it does affect Centerville. It does affect yeah. American High, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So our fr previous event, which was about CPR and AEDs, that was only mission, but after that we got representatives from all the different high schools throughout Fremont, and due to that we have expanded. And in our future events, we will have training for all the different high school students, so from American, Irvington, all, all the high schools. And so that's Perfect. how we have expanded. Perfect. And following this, we do plan to expand into the Tri-City area, so oh. that because We're all the in together. earthquake won't affect just Fremont, it'll right. affect the city surrounding us as well. Right. So now, how about elementary or junior or middle school, I should say, now? Yeah, so um, for elementary and junior high specifically, our focus currently is on high school students due to their maturity and ability to lead. Right. Um, but in the future, once we establish the YEPC more strongly in Fremont, we're definitely looking to bring programs to the youth um, in elementary and middle school because we can't forget about them as well. Absolutely, yeah, because they'll be running to you guys. Um, so when you guys do incorporate other high schools and hopefully the Tri-City high schools, are you going to have one big monthly meeting with everybody, or how do you meet right now? Yeah. So right now, we just had a meeting actually with our representatives from the Fremont high schools. Is that once a month? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so in that we just discuss how we want to proceed with YEPC. Okay. And other than that, we have events where we provide training for the students themselves who want to learn about right. emergency preparedness. And we also learn in those events because this is our first year doing this. Now that CPR um, event that you mentioned earlier, was that part of this council or was it part of the safety or is it combination? Yeah, so the event that Hirsch mentioned was our first event as a YEPC. Got it. Um, it was on August 25th at Washington Hospital actually. We had about nice. 40 attendees in total. Wow. Um, and we had, as you said, CPR, first aid and AED training as well as Stop the Bleed training from Stanford. Good. Um, Good. So that was our first kickoff event, and actually this upcoming two months, we're releasing our biggest program for the whole city. Um, it's something called Teen Cert. Um, what Teen Cert specifically is, nice. it's um, Cert is Stanford Community Emergency Response Team, and that's a 20-hour intensive training for adults to be able to help city officials in an actual emergency. There's another nationwide program called Teen Cert, which you can guess is the same thing for teens. However, it's not established in Fremont. So these past- Fix it. Yeah. Okay. So these past <laughs> couple of months, actually Hirsch, Sahil, and I have been working with Fremont Fire, Fremont PD nice. to create this program. Um, and in November and December, we're gonna be finding students who are committed, who are willing to take this 20 hour intensive training so that they can educate students in their respective high schools as well as help city officials in an actual emergency. Yes, because that's going to be important. Because should we ever have the big one, a lot of roads will be, you won't be able to travel on them exactly. like you yeah. normally do. And I can't race to your house like I normally would. I'm going to have to foot it with tennis shoes or yeah. boots or whatever to get to you to help you out. But I mean, if you guys can help with that, that would be phenomenal. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Now, you mentioned the Fremont Fire and the Fremont Police. <clears throat> with the uh, teen cert, but with your emergency preparedness um, council, are they also involved with that aspect? Yep, so actually our event on August 25th, we had two speakers actually. We had the Fremont Fire Division Chief, okay. Chief Diane Henry mm -hmm. come and talk. She's uh, great. Yeah, and we've also had um, a representative from F the National FEMA. Um, his name is Tarek Elamin. He's a community preparedness officer nice. for Region 9. 
and we've been working extremely closely with our fire manager, Mr. Alex Chubak, um, in specifically creating TeamCert because he's going to be one of the main instructors. So actually a lot of our programs will be in collaboration with them because we need someone, uh, we need an organization that's official that has reputation in Fremont for us to really expand out to the youth. Now because you guys, um, I know most campuses have their own police officer, are you working with your police officer on your campus as well? Yep. Yeah. Uh, we were working with our SRO actually specifically to revise our fire good. drill plan. Um, good. So he's definitely part of the team as well. That's good because you want him on your team. Yeah. Just saying. Okay. Now you guys have um, um, participated in the ShakeOut, that event that just happened. Um, are there any other events that you want to show off right now? Because you've got a viewing audience to listen to you. So please show it off. Well, we have a multitude of events planned this year. Um, we plan on partaking in the National Stop the Bleed Training Day, which is going to be on May 23rd, and also the National Amateur Radio Day, which is on April 18th. Amateur radio? Yes. So like ham radios? Exactly, ham radio. Nice. And it will accompany our ham radio training, which basically teaches the students how to use a ham radio in case of an emergency. Yeah. And of course, interdispersed throughout the year, we're going to have uh, CPR trainings like the one we just had, we're going to have more, we're going to spread them out more, we're going to collaborate with the school in making, say, more preparedness kits, and we're going to collaborate on drills, so yeah. we have an entire thing planned. Now, should one of your, stu or your fellow students um, take the CPR training, do they have to be retrained every year? How does that work? So, actually, for the CPR training that we do specifically, we work with Lifeline Safety Training, and they're in collaboration with the American Heart Association, okay. so their training lasts for two years. Um, so whatever training they get done is um, viable for two years and then they get it recertified. So. And are you getting CPR training for adults, children, and babies? Yes. 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 Perfect. Okay, good. Because you don't know who you're going to run into, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, now, Stop the Bleed. For a lot of people who have never heard of that, explain what that means. Sure. Um, so Stop the Bleed started from Michelle Obama and actually the Parkland shootings that happened um, what first aid responders found out after the event was that a lot of the lives could have been saved if the people there knew how to, quote, stop the bleed, right? A lot of the victims died from bleeding out. Mm -hmm. So this program was cre created, Stop the Bleed, to teach citizens the simple task and the simple idea of how to, like, stop a big puncture wound using a tourniquet. So what, what is Stop the Bleed really about? It's about dealing with these simple first aid injuries which can lead to catastrophic results, right. right? So we learn how to use a tourniquet, we learn how to apply a big bandage properly. Um, the small aspect of first aid can actually have such a big impact mm -hmm. and that's really the goal of Stop the Bleed. So if you do take the Stop the Bleed training, just like CPR, does that last for two years and then you have to be retrained? Yeah, it really okay. depends on which organization you do it with, but okay. yes, you definitely want to get retrained because in any skill you're going to forget it after some time, so right. refreshing your memories. And then things improve and yeah. you yeah. want to know the new ways of doing something. Um, for any fellow student in our school district, if you want, if they would like more information or if they're on the fence, they're not sure, should I do this, should I not do this, what words of encouragement would you give anyone watching this? Because this will take them throughout their whole life. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't really call it words of encouragement because emergency preparedness is a serious topic. So it's not something that, oh, if I feel like doing it, I want to do it, then I will do it. It's more like everyone should be doing it and yes. everyone should be prepared for it because we are overdue for a big earthquake and so it will happen sometime soon. So it's better to be prepared and be safe and ready for that time than to not be prepared at all. Absolutely, because you know what? What if one of your fellow students, you know, they moved to Florida, hurricanes, yeah. same yeah, thing, exactly. or Tornado Alley in the Midwest, right? Mm -hmm. So this will help them throughout their whole life yeah. because no one is amused from an experiencing a natural disaster. I think everyone in the world has had some kind of close call or has actually been in one, right? Yeah. right. Yeah. So you guys started in June, right? Um, you're 11th and 10th grade, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you con going to continue this next year? Yeah. yeah, so actually you just mentioned Florida, which reminded me to talk about something. So we are trying to create something sustainable here in Fremont. So this is not just for one year, this is not just for two years. Good. After all three of us graduate, we want this to be here 20 years later, right? And speaking more on that, you mentioned Florida. The ultimate goal of YEPC really is to set up as many chapters as we can across California and across the nation, really. Because the more kids that are 
prepared, the better off our yes. state, the better off our nation is going to be. Yes. So this is definitely a very, very long-term um, investment, and okay. we're hoping to make it as sustainable okay. as possible. Now, when you guys first got into this, were you shocked on the percentage of Americans who are not prepared? Absolutely. Was that shocking? Yeah. yeah. Especially considering the fact that in all the different regions of America, there's at least one natural disaster or emergency that can yep. affect them. Even if it's a snow blizzard. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're locked in your house for weeks <laughs> with no power, how do you how do you deal with it, right? Exactly. So I think this is great. I am so proud of you guys because I'm a firm believer in being prepared because I grew up with earthquakes and <laughs> droughts and fires, and I'm still dealing with it. I wish you guys all the success. You guys are talented, and you can do this. All right, I'm counting on you. Fix the world, okay? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And from everyone here at Community Conversations, we appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>